our brain is a time machine. So when we go to a memory, our brain doesn't understand that we are looking to something that is not here. If you go, if we think together in a moment that was very uh, hard and uh, challenging to deal with, your body is going to start to feel some alertness. You're going to start to feel some sort of pain of, no, I don't want to go there. I don't want to think about this, this moment because your brain understands that you are going there right now. So we are time traveling. Our brains are our time machines. Hello, everyone. Today, I am so happy to have with me Gustavo Noguera, who's going to speak with us about temporality and his temporality lab. Uh, so Gustavo is an artist, researcher, and entrepreneur questioning our relationship with time as individuals and as a society. And about his temporality lab, they help to build the horizons of the next era while addressing the urgencies of the next hour, creating courses, lectures, and events, learning communities, and other temporal experiments. So welcome, Gust. Thank you very much to have me here. I'm very and happy to be in this conversation. Yeah, and I'd love to hear anything more you want to say about yourself, and then maybe we could hear more about how you came to this journey with time and temporality. For sure. So I am a man from uh, the north of Brazil. I was born in the Amazon rainforest region, where we have many different cultures that uh, come together. Brazil is a cultural cauldron of the uh, this connection between people from African heritage, indigenous heritage from the South America, uh, Europeans that trying to make a life um, moving to uh, to the global south, and the country developed in between all of these different cultures. I was born in the north of, of Brazil, but because of the colonial process, very influenced by uh, the European way the European world view uh, to, uh, to basically anything around. So I had a dream and I had aspirations around uh, what I wanted to work and research in a pretty uh, linear way to, to see my next steps. So I was living in my hometown. I had this idea to uh, go to one of the main cities of Brazil, that is Sao Paulo. From there, go to maybe to the United States and to... Uh, work in something that would be faster, bigger, uh, and hopefully better. But then in now, in, in the middle of the story, I was already working as a researcher and strategist inside of the, uh, advertising industry for different brands, working together, uh, with very good partners in research projects. When we started to have one of the big protests that we had there in Brazil in 2013, at the same moment that we were having the Arab Spring and uh, all these social movements that people were awakening to uh, uh, collective questions that we should address, I understood that more important than to look to trends, uh, to brands, corporations around, was to understand this collective change. And change was my first big subject to arrive in our relationship with time. So looking to social change and how we co individually and collectively can connect to what is changing around, I started to relate to this perspective. I started to do uh, first, first some projects around, uh, around change in this approach that I just shared. But then one of the definitions of time one of the most old definitions uh, coming from, from the Greek culture uh, about time is that time is the measure of change, is the way we look to change, we perceive change. So I understood that to, in order to help people to deal with change and to navigate change, we would need to study our relationship with time. So like this, I started to invite individuals and organizations to look not only to the changes that we need to face 
in the hour, but also to understand this big perspective of what is changing the era that we are living. The time is a very important element in my in, in my work since then. And now it's going to complete like 10 years that I am working and researching inside of this area. But this process also changed a lot during, uh, during this uh, process. Because our relationship with time can also come from many different approaches and, and, and uh, views. And today I understand that my work is in this transdisciplinary uh, approach because I come from social studies, but uh, it is an area that we need to connect, we need to relate many different other areas and other fields of knowledge to be able to address. Because until today, Science, uh, physics, uh, say that we don't know exactly, precisely what time is. So we are talking just like we live, we wake, we woke up today, we are living our lives and we're going to go through the day without knowing how our consciousness work. The same, in the same way, we don't know exactly and precisely what time is and how we relate to that. We just know that time is passing. In, in, the, in different ways uh, that we perceive uh, in different cultures. So studying the spirit of the time, this, this approach that makes us look to uh, what are the main ideas and main narratives of the time that we live, I started to connect on these studies also how different cultures look to this time in different ways. And today I have this uh, course and I do other temporal experiments around that as well to invite people to develop this temporal literacy. So how we can learn these uh, new ways, like a language, to relate to time other than the future-oriented perspective that we have today. So I, uh, have, I, develop, I have developed project, projects together with a community of futurists, for example, uh, but I understood that we have, when we are talking about time, we have this more integral perspective. We look more at uh, our relationship as a whole with time. When we are looking only to futures, usually today, the community around uh, the future studies started more uh, with, with an approach that is more tech-oriented, more how we are going to use the, the technologies of the future, the tools of the future, uh, to shape the society in a way that is still useful to the companies of today. And I work together in projects with futurists that I think that they bring uh, very interesting approaches to, uh, to the projects. And I have developed the, these uh, skills as well. But I understand that to study the uh, time and our relationship with time is something else. It's something that allows us to understand our presence in the world, also today, where we come from, who, uh, with whom we are sharing this moment, and to where we want to go together. We have many possible answers. So when we look to the different these different possibilities, I also understand that we can uh, have a more rich experience in our own lives. And then this is the, uh, the point that I am today in this project, that our relationship with time, when we look to the time of our lives, and not only time is in, as in an abstract way, uh, this relationship is called a temporality. It is the way that I look to the time of my life, my way of being, what are my goals, what are my, uh, uh, my, my ways of walk, the steps that I walk in this life. So when I have a clear perspective that my way of being is influenced by the culture that I was born and also by the colonization process, for, for instance, uh, I can also take more conscious decisions about this relation. So in the Temporality Lab, we invite people to not only have the, the literacy about it, but also to experiment with other temporalities. In this, is where I believe that we can have uh, new ways of clothing uh, coming to the surface of how we can live our lives.
Yeah, this is so wonderful because I think in a way people are aware of time, right? We in this it they we feel like we want to put this intentionality towards time. Mm -hmm. You know, we want to feel less busy. We want to, you know, feel like we're making the most of our time. But it's really not questioned as like a more depth of the actual concepts we have around time and our actual relationship to this depth like this. Um, so yes. I'm just really hearing that in like this much deeper intentionality and, and looking into it as a relationship. Um, so there's a lot of different ways I could go here. I think I'm going to start since you were talking about the lab though, with, I'd be curious to hear, could you give us one example of a temporality experiment? Yes, for oh, sure. I think uh, I'm going to bring first one example of the first initiatives that we started to, to do some years ago and one more recent. Uh, when we talk about, uh, as you said, people believe uh, usually that we understand what time is and how time is present in our life. Time is passing and that's it. But actually in each different field of knowledge, we have a different perspective of time. So when we are talking, for example, uh, in the field of psychology, how we can perceive time. Actually, time is something very subjective that each individual is going to have a different experience with time. Some people have a more uh, past-oriented uh, perspective with time. So they are more nostalgic. They are looking more to memories. They are uh, also facing more their fears and the things that they wanted to be done in a different way, but now they are in that in that way that happened because they are looking to the past. We can look to the past with uh, a more uh, with some lenses that we are gonna learn something from that past in order to to navigate change, or we can be more like guilty about it about about what happened. Uh, and these are other orientations around past. We also have people that are more orient, uh, more present oriented. So they are more hedonistic. They try to enjoy more the present. They try to uh, find uh, happiness in what is happening here without necessarily be planning uh, or be building something towards the future. And some people are able to be hedonistic in the present in a good way. And some people also are uh, feeling more fatalistic, like ah, things are happening with me, I don't have control, so I am just like floating from one side to the other, going to the directions that time tells me. Uh, and uh, we also have people that are more future oriented, some with a perspective or a orientation that is more uh, transcendental in the sense of I look to the future, but I'm not doing anything to reach this future. So it's like something that is there beyond my sight, in the other side of a, a huge valley, and I don't know necessarily when or how I'm going to arrive in that future. For instance, people that says that, ah, I want to live a different life, have a different job, but maybe this is going to happen when I get retired or uh, in a future that I don't know exactly when, and I'm not putting action and effort on that. The other aspect of future is when we start to uh, to build a bridge in between this present that we are living with this future that we want to live. So the future orientation that is more action oriented, it is this one that uh, we start to understand that we need to, if we want to live in a castle, for example, in the future, I need to start to put building blocks around myself today to build this castle in the future. If I want to reach the other side of this mountain, I need to start to put building blocks of this bridge to reach the other side. And the fact is that all of us, in different moments of life, we live different orientations of that. So in some of the experiments, for example, I invite people to analyze and to be aware of which of these orientations of past, present, and future with these different sides that I mentioned in each one that they feel that they, they are more uh, connected right now. And understanding that we flow from different ones, for example, one day that you wake up very late to something, you are going to pass the whole day thinking of, oh my God, why I went to bed so late yesterday, or why I'm not 
uh, able to hear the alarm. Oh, I'm gonna, I'm doing that since I was in school. So you're gonna be past oriented at that moment because an event triggered that. So how we can invite more events in our life to trigger the orientations that we would like to be more connected with. So for instance, if we want to be more future oriented towards this uh, concrete approach that I mentioned, action oriented, which events I should be surrounded by. If I want to be more hedonistic, having more uh, pleasure, uh, pleasant moments around, how I can be uh, surrounded by events and people that are also gonna invite me to be present in this moment. So I invite this community uh, of time travelers, as we, we, we call them, to experiment with these other perspectives and to try to switch their own lenses around time. This one is very psychological, uh, but we can go, uh, because it's very like subjective, as I said, and when we look to neuroscience, for example, our brain is a time machine. So when we go to a memory, our brain doesn't understand that we are looking to something that is not here. If you go, if we think together in a moment that was very uh, hard and uh, challenging to deal with, your body is going to start to feel some alertness. You're going to start to feel some sort of pain of, no, I don't want to go there. I don't want to think about this, this moment because your brain understands that you are going there right now. So we are time traveling. Our brains are our time machines. And when we understand uh, that, we can also use this time machine to navigate to moments that are still not here yet, but then they can uh, be invited and then they can help us to feel how we would feel around this moment and invite this moment to happen in the present as well. So using this kind of uh, techniques that I am uh, sharing here, I invite people to not only hear about it, but also to embody this experience of time to feel in the body, in the present, in the presence of uh, these events that we are that I'm sharing. Uh, all of these approaches I was using already in the beginning of this initiative. Uh, but when I understood that when I started to look to other cultures and to my own and to understand how the colonial process uh, silenced a lot of these other ways of being and these other ways of relate to time. I understood the importance to also bring voice to the experiments and to the languages that talk about time through different perspectives. So today, these experiments, they also look more and focus more in the original perspectives from indigenous people, mostly from South America and Central America, where I am more uh, connected uh, with and I related uh, more uh, because of the region. Also, uh, with the African in diaspora that influenced so much the culture in Brazil and myself with my family. Uh, so what are the difference between these other perspectives of time? What we can learn when we look to that? Like we have different experiments as well, because while the European or uh, Western worldview look to time in, the, the, in this direction of future in a linear way, when we look to, for example, the indigenous or African perspective of time, time is not a line. Time is a spiral with cycles that are repeating again and again and again. And each time that we pass through an event again, we have an opportunity to gain some learning about that event to when we complete a round cycle again and pass through this event, we are going to be able to look to that event from a new perspective. Like a spiral, we're going to be in another level of the spiral. And when we bring that to our bodies, uh, we can understand that time is not outside of us. These, uh, these learnings from the spiral of our ancestors is not outside of us. We are made of our ancestors. They are in our blood, in our bodies. So we can also reach this information and these learnings that from the ones that came before of us right now in the present. So these are uh, the examples of more uh, decolonial approaches that we use today in the initiatives. 
Wow, there's so much there. Let's see. I think mm -hmm. I want to first respond to the spir that spiral idea because mm -hmm. that was really interesting to me because I always talk about my spiritual journey being a spiral. Um, but it also brings up to me that, you know, that idea that time can also be organized around meaning. It made me think of Jung um, and synchronicity, sort of the concept of that you could actually organize um, events by meaning rather than uh, the linear way of time that we're thinking of. Um,